Roberson, the kick, Bostic. That does it. Power of the ball refused to back down. Welcome to the Around 270 Hoops podcast. I'm your host, Zach Fleer of 270 Hoops. And today I'm joined by a special guest. If you watched ESPN last night, you would know him as Armored Athletes, Josh Bostic. But if you're from Columbus, you know him as Westland legend, Finley great, national champion, mm -hmm. and 11-year overseas pro, Josh Bostic. Josh, what's going on? After the win last night, how are you feeling today? Man, I feel good, man. I feel like I, feel like I want to keep it going. <laughs> And then for you guys, you know, you're in the TBT. It's every game's yeah. on ESPN, but it's a little different. You guys are in a bubble. You're quarantined. You know, yeah. you're away from the general population. What is life like in the bubble, and how does this event kind of differ from, you know, events you've played in, you know, big-time tournaments, yeah. both in college, overseas? How is this different from all those experiences? <clears throat> well, actually, it's uh, – I, I just was talking to my agent about this. Um, it actually helped. The quarantine helped uh, – our team, especially uh, with the chemistry, man, and gelling. I mean, we have no choice but to hang out um, here in the bubble. Pretty much, I mean, everybody knows they're testing us constantly, as they should. Um, we feel extremely safe here. You know, they have all the precautions in place. Um, all the players have their own individual rooms, <clears throat> but the uh, each team has a a suite that we all can hang out at uh, with your own team and. Uh, We've been hanging out in there heavy, man, playing Madden, you know, uh, playing a lot of cards, a lot of spades. And uh, just that, you know, uh, has really helped us, I believe, on the court as well, because our whole team is just full of professional guys who are here to win. So and then, I think it's tremendously. As far as the bubble, are you guys only allowed to hang out with your team? You can't interact yeah. with other other teams? Yeah, no, I mean, we, and, and that's what's weird is because basketball is actually a really small community and uh, we know everybody, everybody knows everybody, all the players, you know, at some point we played with or against. So, you know, you see a guy, you know, we can't even be on the elevator with other teams. Wow. You can only be on the elevator with your team. So, you know, you see a guy that you just were playing with or against, you know, overseas on the elevator and it's like, you got a mask on and it's like, hey, what's up? But I can't talk to you for real, you know what I mean? So, I don't know, it's kind of weird, but in a way, uh, it's been a, a blessing in disguise for, for teams like us who haven't really been able to have training camps or anything like this leading up to the TBT. So, you know, I'm just taking it taking it with a grain of salt, man, and trying to get as, as much positive out of it as we can. And then what's your connection with Armored Athlete? Is, is this your first year playing in the TBT? Like, how did, how did you get involved with those guys? Yeah, this is my first time playing in the TBT. Um, Armored Athlete has, you know, they try to get me, I think, the last two years, but I I never really had an interest to play, you know, competitively in the summer just because I, I, I like to more so, you know, take that time off, enjoy my family, and work out preparing for the next overseas season. Um, but this year it was it was it was something it was something different. You know, it's in Columbus. Uh AJ, our, our general manager, Mayhar, he, he uh, got a hold of my agent and, uh, you know, asked if I wanted to play again. And uh, at first I was hesitant, but I ended up calling my agent back like, yo, I've, I've been, I haven't played since February, like a, a full, a regular game. Uh, I'm in shape. I'm ready. Let's do it. It's in Columbus, man. Let me, let me just come home and give it a shot. Man. So that's pretty much how that happened. And uh, I'm glad I did so far. And then last night, you guys had a tough win, uh, up 19 yeah. against Power of the Paul, Clemson alumni. You guys yeah. ended up closing it. You had 15 points, hit three triples. I, I like the way you played. You were kind of a veteran presence with that team. Yeah. You have a great backcourt. I, I like John Roberson and Scott Machado a lot. Those guys were dynamite last night. Uh, what's your type, what's your role on this team? Like, what are you looking to accomplish for these guys? Yeah. And, you know, how do you, how do you really contribute to this, to this squad? Well, I, I, I definitely take in that veteran role. Um, and I, 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 I'm a, I'm a utility knife now, or, or what is it, Swiss Army knife? One of them knives. I'm, I'm that. I'm that. <laughs> uh, I, I've always taken pride in that, and uh, you know, being that gel guy, that glue guy, you know, and bringing veteran leadership. And I told the coach, I told the GM, you know, when I come here, I, I don't, I don't care about the ESPN. I mean, that's, that's exciting to play on ESPN. It's exciting to, you know, get the highlights. I'm here to win, though. I don't, I don't care about getting no MVP. You know, if you guys need me to come out and score 20 night I'm gonna give it my shot 
But one thing that I can guarantee I'm going to give 100% effort on defense, you know, and, and do my best to be a leader on and off the court, you know, and I, I believe that's my role. That's my job. And uh, I, I'm lucky to have a, a, a group of guys who feel the same way. We all have the same mindset that we're here to win a tournament, not to win a highlight reel. And then you hit the game winner last night for the Elam right. ending. And you gave a bow, and you said on Twitter, <laughs> the 614. What was that bow all about, man? That was really cool to see that. Man, you, <laughs> it just it, – it was a combination of feelings, man. You know, the, the city has given me so much. Uh, Columbus, Ohio, man, it, it means so much to me. You know, I'm not here as much as I, you know, necessarily would like to be. And just to be here in that moment, to hit a shot like that in, in my city, man, it just – it was a sign of respect to, you know, all the haters and all the non and all the supporters. You know, it was for everybody. That's awesome. And I think some people, when they watch the TBT, they may think that there's not a whole lot of preparation, that some of these teams just roll the ball and <laughs> play. What, what level of preparation is in it for you guys? Like, how often do you practice? You guys watch a lot of film. You know, what type of preparation is involved for these games? Man, well, we definitely practice every day. Um, obviously, the intensity of that practice is based on, you know, our schedule. Uh, but, man, this is, this is taken very serious. What people should realize is, most of these teams are comprised of high level pros. You know, this is, this is not just random guys from the YMCA, right. you know, with a team to no. these are guys who are Euro league, which is the second highest league in the world. Euro cup, you know, that's third. You know, this is, these are high level guys, high level pros who get it, you know, and there's tons of film. And I, I gave the example the other day, uh, we had practice at like seven o'clock a few days ago at night. We didn't get done till like nine, and our guy it was about three or four guys. Like, yo, we gotta we gotta get to get our film in, you, you know. And by the time we get a shower and and eat food, we we were in the film at ten o'clock. Didn't get out of there until about eleven fifteen. And this is this is the level that you know it takes to to win something like this. So, I love it, man. I love it. And then moving on to the next game, you know, you guys were the fifteen seed. You move on to the round of sixteen. You have the number two squad. And overseas oh, yeah. elite and all the pundits, all the experts, they're kind of just riding their ticket all the way to the title game. And you're going mm -hmm. up against the squad. You know, if they weren't good enough. They've won four titles the last five years, 29 to 30 games. They go out and add Joe Johnson, Jared Jack, Jordan mm -hmm. Crawford, and they still have DJ Kennedy. What type of challenge is that going to be like? What are you looking most, you know, forward to the most in that game? And mm -hmm. what's it going to take uh, to pull off the win and, you know, shock, really shock the world and the basketball community, you know, on Thursday night? Yeah, on paper, they look amazing. Yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's that simple. I'm, I'm sure if they were a video game team, their rating would be 99, you know. <laughs> but one thing about basketball is if you put in the proper preparation, you know, if you come in with the right mindset, anything is possible. Um, and, and the thing I like about the guys on my team is we look at every single one of these teams like they are humans. You know, I, I, everybody's talking about ISO Joe or, or, or Jared Jack. Dude, these guys are great players, but I look forward to the challenge. You know, we're going to have to play great defense, you know, and uh, we're going to have to continue to play well on offense. But uh, I, I think we have enough, man. And uh, I, I personally love, the underdog position, you know, I, I'm, 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 that's me. That's yeah. in my blood. The underdog is in my, I don't, I, I feel, I feel uncomfortable when I'm ranked too high. I don't like that. <laughs> I like being, I like being the underdog, you know, that's, that's where, that's, that's where I was raised in. That's what I'm born. That's what I'm natural in is being that underdog role. So, you know, I, I don't want nobody to vote for us. You know, it, it, the only people I need is the people in the locker room to be on my side and I'm ready to go to war. So it should be a fun one, man. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to it. I, when I saw that you were playing with Armored Athlete and looked at that bracket, I'm like, man, I hope they get to that second round game. <laughs> I want to see you. You know, you talked about defense, so I imagine you're going to be guarding Joe Johnson a lot. I can't wait. I don't think anyone's going to play harder than you, so that's going to be I can't fun. Wait. And I, I, I hope the kids in Columbus especially, like, pay attention because yeah. I, I try to do a lot of my work to, you know, show guys that have come from this area. And mm -hmm. you know, going back to your high school career, you went to Westland High School, uh, yep. Back in the class of 20, uh, 2005, um, yeah. you guys were district champions. For me, that was – I was in sixth grade then, and my dad took me to all those games. He was a Westland graduate of 87. Wow. My mom was a uh, Westland graduate of 90, and then my dad was I coaching didn't know that. Wow. Yeah, my dad was actually coaching baseball there uh, for the freshman team when you were a senior. So – Wow. I watched all of those games. I remember the game against Lancaster especially in that district <laughs> tournament. 
Yeah. And then you, I think you guys might have played Thomas Worthington. I forget the I matchup. Think, I think we played either Thomas Worthington or Upper Arlington, and then it was Lancaster, something like something like that. That was just a battle, and you guys yeah. get your chances. Only the second district title in school history, the first since '97. Yeah. Um, when you think back to that, that, that those days, like what moment really sticks out the most for you? Man, um, there's a couple, man. But you you, bring, you mentioned that Lancaster game. Um, we actually played Lancaster earlier in the season um, at Lancaster. And if anybody knows anything about Lancaster basketball, you don't win in Lancaster. That just doesn't happen. You, yeah. you don't win there. You, you don't win in that gym, man. And uh, earlier that year, we won in Lancaster. And I remember that setting the tone for our season, man, because we, we went in there knowing <laughs> knowing how difficult it was. So I think we, we definitely built momentum from that. So then seeing them again in the regionals, man, we were, we were, we had that confidence that we needed, you know, that we can beat these guys, you know, going against the McKnight brothers versus the Bostic brothers, man, that was, that was a battle. It always was a battle. You know, those guys were tough every year. And, uh, you know, that just really stood out to me. That win in Lancaster was a, was a big uh, propeller for our season that year. And then I've I actually played on a basketball team with uh, Justin Patrick a couple of years ago. So I've talked juice. to him. We um, call like, him my juice. juice. <laughs> like he was like the Boris Diaw of our WCL yeah. league. Um, <laughs> just talk about some of your teammates and the coaching staff. Yeah. And you know what was the Westland program like now? Because I think a lot of kids now, you know, Westland's had some hard times the last yeah. several years. They don't understand where the program was at then. What yeah. was it like, you know, being a Westland Cougar back in those days? Well, one thing I can truly say is, man, we had a brotherhood, man. We, we, we truly had a brotherhood. It didn't matter if you were white. We had white guys. We had Filipino guys. We had Somalians. We had, black, we had, Hispanic, we had a little bit of everything, man. No. And we all, we all were, were all on the same page. Uh, you mentioned Juice, Justin Patrick, man. He, me and him together, I, I love playing with that dude, man. He's just a versatile guy. Uh, and then you, you look at our, our, our two wings. Uh, I remember a guy, Chris Rutan and uh, Daniel Cuscio, just two lights out shooters, man, who, who, who would give it all and lay it all on the floor. And then you go to my favorite teammate, and that's my brother, man. He, he was the soldier that we needed, man. He was the enforcer. This guy didn't care about scoring. He just wanted to stop the best player, man, and, and get me the ball. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> So, man, I, I, I really love that team, man. And uh, our coaching staff always did a great job of, you know, making sure we were prepared. Um, so, yeah, man, it was that was a, just an exciting time to be in high school at Westland High School, man, for sure. And then your recruitment, uh, going back to those days, yeah. I don't know if a lot of kids, people understand, you know, in 2005, there wasn't 270 hoops. There wasn't right. like Ohio. You didn't have even really like scout.com and 24 no, seven. It was like JJ huddle or something like that. I think that JJ was huddle. <laughs> message board, like that was it. Um, just what was your recruitment? Like, you know, you went to Finley, they were coming off a of, uh, birth in the elite eight, you know, yeah. prior to you arriving there. What was your recruitment? Like, did you have any other offers? Did you have any division one interest and in what really made the difference for you deciding to go to Finley and, you know, playing for Ron Niekamp? Yeah, when uh, actually, t to be honest, in high school, I was I was a football guy. I played basketball because I, you know, I, w I guess I was good and I, lo I loved it. But, you know, I was primarily I was I played quarterback and my recruitment was was pretty big. I had a couple Big Ten schools. Uh, I remember Wisconsin, uh, Barry Alvarez, I think, was the coach at the time. And, uh, you know, I had some calls from him. Uh, you know, most of the Mac schools were, were on me heavy. Um, but I was a knucklehead when it came to my academics, man. And that's – there's no other way around it. You know, I thought I, I thought my talent would uh, overshadow the need for my academics. And, you know, I, I had the parenting. I had everything I needed. But, you know, I felt like I knew better. And it caught up to me, man. Um, I ended up being ineligible for football my senior year. <clears throat> and I missed half the over half the season of basketball my junior year. Um, yeah, so that just that just hammered my recruitment. Um, and so you fast forward to my senior year, I was only eligible to play basketball because uh, I had missed the entire football season. So I played well, thank God, uh, my senior year. And Finley offered me a full ride scholarship, and I had the choice of walking on somewhere for football. <clears throat> excuse me, or, you know, I'm looking at a division two scholarship 
<laughs> and my mom made it a real a real easy decision for me. She said, <laughs> boy, you're going to Finley. <laughs> 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 she said that's a full ride you're going to Finley and uh you know at the time they were I think either number one or number two in the nation division two so that made my decision a little easier for me it was a tough pill to swallow because I felt like again I was a d1 guy but I have a uh to this day my my big brother I call him Lucius Jones he he had a conversation with me and he said you know if you're a d1 talent then you're going to kill where you're at no matter what, and they will find you. And I said, well, you know, I'm, I'm de he cut me off. He said, they will find you if you do what you're supposed to do. And I took that and ran with it, man, and uh, the rest is history. Absolutely. You had an amazing career. Over four years, you guys won 118 of 130 games. You beat Ohio yeah. State your junior year. That was right after they went to the national title game. Yeah. And then your senior year, you go 36-0. and 0. You guys were number one to start off the season, preseason yep. pool. You were number one from start to finish. And in that tournament game, you had three overtime games. You had a banger against Bellarmine in the regional final. And then you go to the national title game. You were out of yep. the game for the last play. Yeah, fouled out. <laughs> Tyler Evans hits the game-winning shot. What was that run like? When you just think back to the, that, that year, what stands out the most for you? Oh, man. It's tons of things, man. But – one thing I, I actually would, would I, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the coaching staff. Um, because like you said, we were ranked number one in the preseason. You know, I was player of the year in the preseason, you know. And one thing our coaching staff did an amazing job of was keeping us humble, keeping us level-headed. He would almost every day remind us that the day we start believing what the newspaper says about us, that's when we will fail. He would remind us that every, when we start believing with the media, because the media was all for us. Oh, my God, this is the team's amazing. You know, when we got to 12-0. and 0, Don't believe what the media's saying. Y'all not that nice yet. We got the 20-0. and 0, Don't believe it. Y'all not that nice yet. We 32-0. and 0, We like, all right, coach, come on now. We 32-0. <laughs> and 0, we, Don't believe it. And, you know, that helped us because when we got to the tournament, these teams, we had the biggest target on our back. Everybody knows, but everybody wants to knock us off. We're undefeated, you know. And uh, that Bellarmine game, my God, that was, a, that was a thriller, man. And just those overtime games, you know, I think the earlier season or early in the season, that, that humble mindset that we had helped us, helped our composure in late games. You know, it, it just kept us believing in each other. And, uh, you know, it, it was a crazy run, man. But... We pulled it off, man. But I, I definitely have to give a lot of credit to Coach Ron Niekamp and Charlie Ernst, man, for just doing a heck of a job and keeping us humble and level-headed, man, and focused on the, and on the task at hand, and that's a championship. And it seemed like back then the GLIAC was loaded. I know you guys, over the course of four years, you split uh, the, the yeah. GLIAC title with uh, Saginaw. Was it Saginaw or Grand Valley State? Grand Valley. Grand Valley, Grand Valley yeah. What were some of those battles like in the conference? You know, you had some elite programs. What was that like for you? Well, you, you mentioned we beat Ohio State, but what, what, what often doesn't get mentioned is the week before that, Grand Valley beat Michigan State in oh, Michigan. Wow. In, in, yeah, so it was like, okay, we got to do something now because, you know, our rivals just beat Michigan State. You know, so we came down to Columbus, man, with that. Like, yo, we, if they can do it, we can do it, you yeah. know. And, uh, yeah, those battles were crazy, man. That team was – the GLIAC then was stacked, man. And you had Fair State. They, they were always tough. You had Wayne State, who was unreal. Every I hated playing them, man. Those dudes were those dudes were just gritty, grimy, hard playing guys, man. And just all over the board, man. The Gleaf was great. Ashland was was tough always. Yep. So, man, you you look at those teams, man. And this is Division Two, you know. And I'm I'm talking about these guys were tough, man. These guys were tough, tough to play against. And uh, yeah, it was always a battle with the Gleaf, man. No easy games, man. No easy games. And I think even today, you know, you were in college, it was 11 years ago now, D2 National Player of the Year. You're able to go overseas and play in Japan your first year. I think there's a myth now. I think there's a myth where um, a lot of kids, a lot of coaches, parents, whatever, they believe that if you want to be a pro, you have to go D1. What would you say no, to those people that believe that for you, being a D2 guy, you look at another player in the TBT like mm -hmm. Jeff Gibbs from Columbus, went D3, national champion as well at Otterbahn. He's, he's a legend. He's for 20 years. What do you have to say to people that think that D1 or bust is the only route? Well, I, I, if, if you think that, then I don't think you're good enough in the first place. 
Why do I say that? Then I'll echo, I echo what, you know, Lucius told me years ago. If you're good enough, they will find you, man. With the technology, you know, with the scouting now, you know, with the synergy option, they will find you, man. You know, this is not, you know, 1980 where, you know, they had to, it was word of mouth and they had to track. No, they can watch your games. If you're doing what you're supposed to do, where you're supposed to be at, you will be found, man. You can go division six. It doesn't matter. You will be found. Now, the only thing that I would say the difference when it comes to, you know, being a pro, you know, D1 versus D2 or whatever is the exposure. You know, obviously playing for North Carolina, playing for Duke, you get more exposure, you get TV time and whatnot. But at the end of the day, guess what? I've, I've played against Duke, North Carolina. I played against all those guys. You know, I, I remember the the first time I uh, I played against a big name that I had watched in the tournament when I was in college. I think this, this was my third year, second or third year pro. And I played against Sean May and uh, Jawad Williams. They were on the same team. And I'm like, I was I was almost starstruck. I had to catch myself. I'm in the warm-up line. I'm like, is it Sean May? Like, yo, like <laughs> North Carolina Sean May. That's Wy Williams. Like, North Carolina Wy Williams. You know what I mean? I yeah. had to catch myself. You know what I mean? But on the flip side, I was like, man, I'm here. Like, these are the guys that, you know, I'm here. I'm a D, you know, I, I took pride in the in the D2 thing. Like, you know, so again, I, I I just would continue to echo the fact that, you know, if you really think you're D1 talent and you don't get a D1 opportunity, that means nothing. Because if you're good enough, they'll find you, man. And it's that simple. If you're good enough, they'll find you. And how important was it for you to, to go to an elite D2 program that, you know, you guys beat Ohio State. Your rival, they beat Michigan State. And I, still today, you know, the top D2 programs in the country, like the Lincoln Memorials, the Ferris States, yeah. they would beat a lot of Division One programs. Absolutely. How important was it for you to find that great D2 fit where you were able to come in, contribute immediately, and then play in a winning culture that honestly probably still sets you up today when you go to new you know, teams overseas and even play in the TBT, you got that great, amazing coaching in college. How much of an impact has that had on you, you know, in your it's professional, huge, professional career? It's, it's been huge. It's been career changing, I can even say. Um, I know that going – when I went Division II, you know, and, and then I went to a great program, but it humbled me. It humbled me greatly because, you know, I, I went – I remember arriving on campus at Finley, and it's a small camp. It was small then. It's a little bigger now. But I was salty. I remember being angry on campus, like, man, I'm better than – like, this is not me, you know. But looking back on it now, you know, obviously hindsight is twenty twenty. But looking back on it now, I definitely could say, you know, I wasn't mature enough to go to a Michigan State, to Ohio State, you know, to play at a Duke you know, or North Carolina, I wasn't mature. And that's the, that's the other side that most kids and parents don't see is they only focus on the basketball part, but college is bigger than basketball. You know, you got the life after basketball, you know what I mean? That you have to deal with too. And I honestly can say that I don't think I would have been prepared, uh, you know, as far as being mature enough to handle the social part of college, you know, or a, a big school like that, you know, it's too much to do too much to get into, but you in Finley, Ohio, Flag City, Ohio, baby. <laughs> it ain't much. It's about three stoplights, baby. It ain't much to do there, baby. You know, so <laughs> I think that definitely humbled me, man, to focus on my craft, man. It's like you here. What, you, what else you going to do? You know, what else you going to do? Lock in, focus on your craft. And that, man, that humbled me. Like you said, the coaching. Uh, to this day, I remember coming back. I was, uh, I think I was a pro for a few years. And I always uh, try to make it a thing to come back to the University of Finley and work out, talk to their guys, work out with their guys, you know, share tidbits that I learned. But one thing the, the coach said to me, Coach Charlie Ernst, he's the head coach now, he said something to me even as a pro that I still take with me. And I was working on the – shooting on the gun. I was shooting on the gun. And uh, he had noticed, like, man, Josh, your, your shot has really came – like, wow, you can shoot now, you know. And uh, I'm like, yeah, you know, I've been working on my offense. But he looked at me and said, Josh, never forget what got you to where you're at. And I kind of looked at him like, you know, I'm shaking my head like, yeah, but like, you know, what are you talking about? And he's like, your defense. He's like, you're a def you're a lockdown defender. Your offense, you know, you can work on that and that'll come, but never forget your roots. And that just, that has always, every, and that was years ago, that has sat with me as a pro 
forever, man. And now I take, I, I, I embrace it. Man. I'm a defender first who can happen to, who happens to be able to score, you know? So that college, you know, going to the right place, going to the right fit is, is huge, man. I'm glad to hear that. It's something I, I try to expose a lot of, D2 players, D3 players. I see that. I respect, that. I, I respect 270 hoops so I love you guys, Thanks. man. You guys are awesome, man. Real, and that's that's no cap. You guys are awesome, for real. You're doing a great that's job. That's awesome. You, you mentioned synergy. Like, I, I've, I'm fortunate enough that I've found synergy access, and I'm able to find those clips. And like you mentioned, it doesn't matter where you play. Like, if you on synergy, you can find literally players from India if you want. Watch and, this. It, it, and this is what I tell the young guys now. Listen, if you if you think, Okay, these NBA GMs and scouts, if they can go find a guy in a little tiny little village in France and draft, you think they can't come and find you at a D2 school? Stop right. it. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? Like, stop yep. it, man. Stop. You stop making an excuse and get your butt in the gym and get better, man. That's it. That's it. Absolutely. I, I love to hear that. It's, I mean, it's great to talk to people that have done it too. You know, I can, I can right. say it, but. I think when kids hear it from someone who's been there right. and put in the work and now, you know, you're on ESPN and the TBT, it's, yeah. it really means something. Um, but for you, you, you've played 13 different teams overseas. You've been in countries like Japan, Belgium, France, Russia, Latvia, Italy, Croatia, Poland, basically all over <laughs> Europe. Yeah. What is, how has overseas life been? How is it different from life in the United States? And, you know, what's yeah. just the typical life like for an overseas basketball player? It's not for everybody. I can say that. It's not for everybody. I've seen a lot of guys who are highly talented basketball wise, but they can't, they just can't handle the life. And when I say the life, you know, I'm talking about the food, you know, you, I'm me, I'm all for diversity and learning about other cultures and, and embracing, you know, something that doesn't look like me, that doesn't talk like me. You know, I'm all for trying new foods. I'm all, that, that's me, man. So the overseas life has been amazing, man. I've learned so much from every single country I've been in, every single city, you know, I, I, I've said this and I'll continue to say, I think every American, if possible, if they can, should get outside of their bubble, their comfort zone and go, you know, mingle, go hang out, go talk to someone that doesn't look like you. Go talk to someone that doesn't sound like you, that doesn't speak your, nat your, nat your native tongue. You know, that for me has been amazing, just seeing other cultures and how they, interact and I, I know that's helped me adjust and become comfortable you know with being overseas in these different countries because if you go over there with this uh, I guess ethnocentric mindset that you know America is the greatest country in the world well maybe to you but you know some person that's in Italy may think their country's the greatest right you know but, so where can you meet in that middle ground and and I've learned that you know by by humbling yourself by listening more than you speak it can get you further than a basketball or a football or a tennis ball. You know, that, that I'm all about networking anyway. So, you know, I have tons of friends in just about every country you've named. I still have friends, you know, teammate, ex teammates, you know, coaches. And, and I, I wouldn't trade that for the world, man. And how is the game different? I, you know, the European game, I feel like yeah. the NBA is starting to trend that direction as far as positionless basketball. And you have to be able to shoot if you want to compete. And, you know, big guys are switching out on the guards. They're handling the ball on the mm -hmm. front of the What's the game like overseas? And has it changed a lot? You know, since, you know, you started early, you know, 2009, 2010. How has the yep. game changed? And, you know, how is it different from, you know, how the game's played in the United States? Man, that's a good question. Honestly, uh, no, I think I don't know that the game has changed much more since I've, you know, been pro, I think there's a maybe more threes being shot, yeah. if I could think of anything else. Um, but as far as the, the European basketball differing from American or NBA, we'll say, is, you know, people have to realize the NBA is built for entertainment. Right. You know, now these are the best basketball players on, on the earth, right, at the top tier, at the top tier. But at the same time, you know, NBA is built for entertainment. You know, there's just no defense of three seconds. You know, it's all about iso ball and, you know, getting that guy on the island and da -da 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 -da, go past him and dunk. You know, that's what sells tickets. I get it. You know, but you come to Europe, it's it's not that. It's it's team ball, and we're here to win as a team. You understand? And uh, that's an adjustment for a lot of American guys, you know, especially we're, we're trained, you know, 
cross the guy up, you know, get the, get the reaction of the crowd. You know, I remember the first time that uh, I, I noticed a difference in the fans was uh, I, I, see, I was in a game one time and a guy made like a jump stop bounce pass. Like to, to, to a to a big man who laid it up, and the crowd went nuts. Like <laughs> like you would have thought the dude like crossed him up and did some three six. It was like a super fundamental pass, and the crowd was loving it. You know what I'm saying? And I just I just looked like man, okay, this is this is different, man, you know. And uh, I just I, I've learned to love it, man. It's it, for me, it's it's a pure form of basketball. You know, it's a, it's a it's a holistic team involved form of basketball is the European style. I love NBA. Don't get me wrong. You know, that's exciting to watch, especially playoff NBA basketball. But, you know, the, the European league is definitely, definitely more focused on team oriented basketball versus individual basketball. And when you think back to your career, you know, what are a couple moments that really stand out for you on the court, some accomplishments you've had and uh, some of those things that just really stick out for you? Um, uh, well, one moment that stuck out to me that that is kind of random was uh playing against Devin Green uh no oh, my phone going down oh so there my, my fault yep. sorry about that yeah, you're good. was playing against Devin Green in a uh in the what was the semifinals uh who I don't know if many of the young people may know may not know but Devin Green's another Columbus legend you know played alongside Kobe with the Lakers got drafted and just seeing another Columbus guy you know at that level you know playing well it was that was an exciting time um but I know one moment stands out to me, and I talked to uh, Tyhon Johnson about this uh, a couple of days ago, uh, was the fans in Croatia. And when they set the stands on fire during a game, oh my God. <laughs> and got in a fight with the police, man, I'll never forget that, man. I, I, I'll I, just uh, summarize it. Basically, we're in a game, and uh, our fans come marching in. And all of a sudden, I'm just seeing smoke all in the gym. I'm like, what is this? Are they smoking cigarettes? What? Then the smoke's like billowing smoke, like thick cloud smoke. I'm like, okay, the building's on fire. And I look over, it's like half the stands are just burning. And the police are in full riot gear. And I'm like, man, this is wild. But some way I love it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, man, Europe is different, man. Europe I, is different. I try and watch a lot of Eurobasket. I, I've watch obviously Luka Doncic coming up from Slovenia and Croatia Serbia Slovenia like those countries they just play a different brand of basketball so for you being there it's got to be pretty cool to be that close and you know yeah. see how passionate those fans are uh, oh, it's got to be something they cool. do not play no games man <laughs> they're the real deal man those fans are especially in that eastern Europe man they're, they're the real deal buddy and then uh just my last question here run out yeah run out some time here but you know, again, you're on ESPN. What's have you ever played? I know the national title game, the Elite Eight games were on CBS, but is this the biggest platform you've played in your career so far? I think so. Yeah. When it comes to you know just overall, uh, I guess uh, promotion or whatever you would say. Yes, I would say this is probably the biggest stage. Obviously, the national championship was pretty big, um, but yeah, this is this is huge, man. Especially it's it's especially because you know the pandemic has shut down everything. Yep. You know, so with this being really the first, you know, basketball being played in such a long time, and everybody's you know just so hungry to see basketball, you know, and then you have the NBA literally watching, you know, how this bubble goes, and taking and tweaking their own bubble based off of the TBT, you know, that's drawn even more attention. Um, then you got guys like uh, CP3 has a team in here. You know, he would be here coaching if he wasn't playing in Orlando. Right. Uh, you know, Floyd Mayweather has a team in here, man. And, uh, hey. you know, it's, 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 it's <laughs> a lot of attention, man. It's, it's awesome. I, I love it, man. And, uh, you know, I, I hope that we can just keep it rolling, man. I hope so, too. And just one last thing, you know, anything you want to say to the kids in Columbus, you know, a lot of them, I, I try to get them to watch these things, to hear from yeah guys who've done it that have come from the same places they're coming from that have accomplished big things. What would be your words of encouragement for, you know, kids who want to have a career like yours that are maybe considering the D2, D, D2 route or maybe D3 route, you know, what would your word of, of encouragement be for a guy like that? Well, you hear often, you know, find the best fit, find the best fit. And I agree with that. You know, if it's D2, if it's D3, whatever, find the best fit. If it's D1, find the best fit, you know, and then, you know, I, I, 
and this is maybe I feel like somebody told me I'm getting old. This is why I think this, but I'm seeing all these highlight tapes and you know everybody putting up the, you know the crazy workout video, 30 second clips of them doing these crazy dribbling things. I'm not hating. Do what you do, but from a guy who's who, who's been there, who's heard from these coaches, they don't watch your highlight tapes, bro. Those highlight tapes are for your your buddies and your friends on on social media, but these coaches aren't watching those highlight tapes. Coaches are watching synergy. Okay, synergy is whole game clips or or specific. How many times does this guy go left? How efficient is he going to the right with a pull up? This is what they're watching, not your hot. I can make my two year old son look like a legend with a highlight tape. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But it, it takes somebody, a real player, to look good on synergy or to look good on a full game film. You know, I say this all the time. You know, it's better to look good on film than it is on a highlight. There's such a big difference. You know, so. You know, put the work in, young fellas. Put the work in. It'll show. Stay humble, you know, and uh, get your grades. <laughs> get your grades, man. That that hurt me. And, uh, you know, hopefully you guys, you know, if it helps one person, that's that's happy, that's good enough for me. Man. So, you know, that's what I would say. That's what I would say. And I can talk all day. So, you know, you got to cut this off, Zach, because I, I, <laughs> I don't got that premium <laughs> membership yet. For, uh, Zoom. So, I appreciate it. Uh, again, Josh yeah, Foster. Armored athlete, um, Finley alum, national champion, D2 player of the year, and then Westland High School um, legend, you know, district champion, the last one they've won. So I appreciate you stopping on and best of luck. Uh, yes, sir. Columbus will be rooting for you guys, and, you know, hopefully you can pull the upset and keep moving on. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir, man. I appreciate you, Zach. Yep. We'll see you around. Thank you, Josh. All right, have a good one. Yep.